Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Now, the Aprilia Touareg 660. I've been doing a whole video series on this bike and I forget even what episode number this is gonna be, but of course that's gonna be all numbered here. Now, if you've missed any of the videos, I'll have a playlist on the Touareg 660 below that I suggest you check out if you're at all interested in this really amazing midsize adventure bike from Aprilia. All right, so today I'm gonna cover the modifications and accessories that I've made to adventurize and sort of personalize this Touareg 660 for the 50-50 type of riding that I like to do. Now, the only thing that I ask, and I try not to ask too much on this channel, when you're shopping for riding gear, parts, accessories, whatever it might be, please use my affiliate links that are in all my videos it doesn't cost you anything and it's in a great way to support continued product testing and independent motorcycle journalism on this channel. Thank you in advance for doing that. All right, so let's get into it. Now this video is not gonna be real long because honestly, this bike didn't really need a whole lot of stuff to make it adventure ready. Why don't we start with bike protection? I'm a big believer in doing some basic protection on your motorcycle so that if you do have a drop, an accident, a tip over, when you're out far away from civilization, that you don't break things on your motorcycle. So uh, SW Motec was nice enough. They sent out their crash bars and their skid plate for this bike. I have been using SW Motec for the past probably 15 years, long, long before I ever did YouTube. And I have always found their products to be exceptionally well-engineered, strong, and well-designed. So I'm happy uh, that they've decided to send some stuff out for testing. The crash bars, they fit slim to the bike. They don't look too obtrusive. They're extremely strong. They have good, strong mounting points. Uh, they work as designed. So when you drop the bike over, when you crash the bike, you'll impact the crash bar and you'll impact your hand guards or your bark busters, which I'll get to in a second. So I highly recommend the crash bars. There's other good options for this bike, but I personally tested these and I like them. The skid plate. There's not many good skid plate options out there right now yet for the Touareg 660. SW Motec skid plate is large, great coverage, thick, uh, strong construction. The mounting points are really, really good uh, considering the limitations of the motorcycle's design and the mounting points they have to work with. I think they did an amazing job tying that in and making the mounting points as strong as possible. So I have no hesitation to recommend that. It's been working great for me. I think it looks good and it's a great product. So check them out. Now, uh, handguards. I usually always put a metal wraparound handguard on my off-road motorcycles. The reason is when you drop, when you crash, you're protecting not only your hands, but also the levers and the handlebars from having any sort of damage. If you've ever broken a clutch lever uh, on a ride like I have, it's really a bummer. It's kind of difficult to ride without that clutch lever. So I went to Barkbuster. I actually had these Barkbusters from another build that I had in the garage. So I put these on. Uh, Bark Busters are motorcycle specific, and while they do have a specific kit for the Touareg if you're using the stock handlebars, I'm actually not using the stock handlebars, which I'll get to in a second, so I have a little bit different setup, but I am using Bark Busters. All right, let's talk about luggage. How are you gonna carry your stuff on the Touareg? So I test a lot of different luggage systems and I change things around a lot. So it's hard to pin me down on exactly what I'm using uh, on any different bike on a given day. So let's start with some of the racks. So I do have the SW Motec rear a cargo rack here. So even if you're not gonna have panniers, I do recommend getting a rear rack. This motorcycle kind of frustratingly doesn't come with any sort of rear rack. Uh, from the factory, so there's really no place to put a tail bag or a tail box or anything like that. The SW Motec rack is really nice, just like all of their pro products, and fits really well. So I do recommend picking that up. Uh, let's move to panniers and luggage. So right now the racks you see on it are actually the Shad Four Point racks, because I just finished testing the Shad TR40 soft panniers. I have a link to that video below, just a quick video on those TR40 bags, which are pretty cool. You should check those out. Uh, but I've also used on this bike the SW Motec Quick Release Pro Side Carrier racks. Uh, and their Sysbag WPs, which I really like those bags as well. Great luggage from them. 
Um, but if you want to really push me, my preference for this motorcycle, because the bike is so slim and narrow and because it's kind of the smaller bike, I really like the rackless luggage to keep the bike slim and to help preserve the bike's center of mass and not have the weight out too far on the sides. It just seems to suit this bike better. So for me, uh, that could be a giant loop like a Great Basin, something like that. Uh, I like to use the Moscow Moto bags a lot uh, and I have links for Moscow Moto below. So the, rec the Reckless 40 I've used on this bike and it fits really well. You can see I've got a heat shield here uh, to prevent the exhaust from uh, burning those bags. You'll need that, but it comes with those bags if you buy the Reckless bags. The Reckless 80 works really well in here if you're doing longer trips. So I do like the Reckless luggage systems for the Touareg 660. Now in terms of a tank bag, you'll notice that my bike's kind of dusty here. I need to clean this thing. Um, I'm not using a tank bag right now. The reason is that the shape of the, the, the seat and how the tank comes up here, I found that tank bags really kind of were in my crotch and kind of in my stomach. Maybe I need to lose a few pounds, but especially when I was standing up, they were a little bit in the way because of the design of this fuel tank. The only tank bag that I really uh, could work, uh, was, was able to use on this bike without being too intrusive was the Moscow Moto Gnome tank bag, which I'll link below. The Gnome's really cool because it's kind of a, it's a landscape kind of orientation. So it sits up here and doesn't come back and get in your way. So the Gnome works really well. You could also use the, uh, not the Pico, What's the smaller one? I'll put it down below. They have a smaller version of that that kind of sits up here. So I like that one as well. Right now I'm using a giant loop handlebar bag just to store some essentials like a multi-tool, earplugs, uh, uh, goggles, cleaners, stuff like that. Um, you know, wipes for my helmet. Um, so that definitely is a minimalist solution to carry a few things up here that you don't want to put in your jacket pocket to your camelback um, without having a tank bag. So I like the giant loop handlebar bag and I'll link that below. I have that on a lot of my different bikes. All right, let's talk about some comfort and ergonomic kind of things uh, on the bike. So I mentioned earlier, I'm not using the stock handlebars. So I always put flex bars on my off-road bikes. Uh, they're an expensive modification. I'm not gonna deny that, but they're American made and they're incredibly high quality and incredibly functional. What they do is they give you flex in the same axis of motion as the front fork. So you, if you push down on the bars, it's hard to do now on the video, uh, but the bars actually have a lot of give to them. They have a joint right here, which allows them to move. So shocks from off-road terrain, bumps, riding all day, less fatigue, less vibration, they work like magic and I highly recommend them. Are they cheap? No. Are they worth it? In my opinion, yes. So I work, I, I'm starting just now to work with them in terms of getting some bars for future builds, but I have been paying for these, many sets of these over the course of all the bikes that I've owned. So I'm definitely willing to spend and have been spending my own money to get those. I'm using the Tusk adapters for handguards with those flex bars. I find they work pretty well with either the Bark Busters or Tusk handguards or different handguards that you might see out there. You have to use an adapter because the way the flex bars are, you can't use a typical uh, handguard mounting point there. While we're talking about the controls, I do have the Aprilia OEM heated grips. I tested these out and I mentioned that they weren't quite hot enough as I would like. They're okay. Uh, they're warm enough. I just like a little bit warmer. The good thing about them is they're not too fat. I don't like a real fat grip. It, it tends to um, make my hands sore or something. I don't, I don't like the, the like some of the Koso grips and some of the other ones, the Oxfords I've used, but they're a little bit too fat. So I like the, the smaller diameter of the OEM style grips. They also, the wiring's really clean and they integrate into the bike's uh, computer, into the TFT screen to activate the grips. So kind of a nice clean factory solution there. Another sort of comfort item I have is the Puige uh, windshield deflector. This is the medium size, the clip-on one that screws on with the clamps. I have a few of these. I use them on almost all my bikes. They really help clean up the buffeting. And if you adjust it like to this high position, they have all these different positions you can adjust them to. It throws the wind up over my helmet a little bit. For long days on the bike, for higher speed riding, it works like magic, it uh, really helps on this bike. It works on almost every bike I've tested it on. So I recommend trying that out. I'm using the factory windshield, not any sort of accessory screen, and it's pretty good, uh, but it wasn't quite tall enough. So that really helped out with that. Another comfort item I have, and you've seen this on my other bike builds, is an airflow seat cover. So those two companies that make these, and as far as I can tell, they're almost identical products, but they are different companies out of Europe. One is cool covers, one is airflow. 
The reason I like these is that they make the stock seat more comfortable by providing airflow for hot days, warm riding. You don't sweat as much on your butt. You don't get as much of a rash or a monkey butt. I know this is too much information, TMI, but I'm telling you, it's a real factor. And if you've done uh, adventure riding, off-road riding, or even street riding, you know that you can get that rash from the sweat. This helps prevent that. Also, the material doesn't allow water to sit on it, so it's drier, and it makes the seat more comfortable in my experience. So they just came out with a model for this bike, for this seat. Uh, I recommend checking them out. They make, they probably make a model for your bike, and I'd recommend trying out the Airflow or the Cool Covers uh, cover. I don't have an affiliation with them or, an, or anything like that, so I don't earn any money if you buy them. I'm not sponsored, but I just a product that I like to use. All right, one last comfort or ergonomic item that I have. I'm using black dog foot pegs. I would say that the black dog pegs over all the bikes I've done, I've built up, they might be my favorite overall foot peg. Um, they do give you a little bit of lowering, uh, which is nice for a little bit of leg room. They give you a platform that's not too crazy big, but it's big enough to support uh, your boots when you're standing up all day. Very comfortable. Also, I have the, I think these are called the platform pegs. They make like two versions and you can also screw like dowels into them. So you can uh, have a sharper uh, foot peg if you want more grip. I like to have not quite as sharp because I don't want to tear up my, the soles of my boots as much. So I don't have those dowel pins or whatever screwed into these. But anyway, the size is great. Um, the nice thing about Black Dogs too is that, well, they're a USA family owned small business made in USA, I like that. But also uh, they include an installation pin. So when you're trying to, uh, get the pin in with a spring. It's super fast and easy and no other foot peg manufacturers doing that. So huge fan of Black Dog um, and I'll probably stick with those on a lot of my future bike builds just because I've had such good experience with them and are such a high quality product. They come in silver and they also come in black uh, anodized as well. One thing up here on the handlebar I forgot to mention, I don't have any program with quad lock. I'm, I'm kind of stupid because I probably should have some program or earn money from this. Maybe I will someday. But I do like the quad lock phone mounts over the years. I used to use RAM mounts, but they just weren't were not as good. So I've got the wireless charging pad, the vibration isolator. So you click this in, the phone clicks on. I mean, off-road, on-road, the wireless charging, you don't have to connect anything. Man, this thing is amazing. I also use RAM components at the base, uh, and then I use an adapter to connect to that, to the quad lock uh, phone mount itself. I like the RAM components because they're more interchangeable. I can use a clamp mount, uh, the tough cloth thing, or I can use, on this bike, I've got an actual cl uh, clamp onto the handlebar. But I really like the quad lock stuff. Now, moving on to some of the performance stuff, I do have the Aprilia OEM Quick Shifter. As opposed to the heated grips, which I'm kind of just lukewarm on, get it, lukewarm heated grips? Anyway, that was a joke. But uh, the quick shifter uh, is amazing. It's one of the best quick shifters that I've used. Um, super smooth, like butter up and down. It makes riding the bike so much more pleasurable on and off-road, especially like when I'm off-road too, like I can be standing up and I don't have to grab the clutch to get a gear change. I just snick the lever into gear up, down. It's so nice. And on the road, you feel like you're a racer or something because you can shift so quick. Highly recommend that accessory. It's a few hundred bucks and then you gotta have it installed and activate it at your Prilia dealer. But if you're gonna get one of these bikes or you have this bike, Dude, like you gotta get that quick shifter. It's a really worthwhile accessory. If I was to get one Aprilia OEM accessory, that would be the one. All right, tires. Now, you know, tires, I mean, it's tough for me because it's such a personal thing. And depending on what kind of riding you're doing and what kind of rider you are, and can you tolerate the noise from the knobbies and the wobbles from the knobbies, or do you want a road tire? Are you riding in mud and snow? Are you riding only on gravel? I just don't know. There's so many tires out there, but here's what I will say for tires. On this bike, because it's such a good off-road bike, it tends to, I use it a lot off-road and I need to tackle mud and sand and snow terrain like that. So I use a knobby adventure tire on this bike, more of like an 80-20 type off-road, 80% off-road, 20% on-road type of tire. So I'm a big fan of Motaz tires. Uh, the rear tire I'm using is the Rowl Z. You could also use the Tractionator Adventure, uh, which is slightly less aggressive, but kind of similar to the Rowl Z. The front tires, I tend to, I usually like to use the Motaz Dual Venture. I didn't like the other Motaz front tires in the past. The Dual Venture works really well and it's reversible. However, the reason that I've got an Anarchy Wild on the front right now is because there was a, I think there was a few of the dual ventures and I got one of the, these that did this. They were having some issues with the bead sealing. So I had some leakage uh, occasionally from the front um, tire with that bead. So <clears throat> because I was going on a ride, 
didn't have time to get a new new one of those. I had the Anarchy Wild, so I put that on. Um, so there's a lot of tires you can use. The factory tires, the Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs, they're a good road tire. Uh, they're okay on dry dirt and gravel, but if you get into any sort of sand or mud or loose terrain, they just don't work in my experience. So I was I changed those out right away. In fact, I have a brand new set of them uh, with this bike. All right, two more things I almost forgot and I wanted to be sure to mention. So I'm using a Garmin Zumo XT, which I love. I featured it in my other videos. It's the best motorcycle GPS in my opinion and I highly recommend using it. Now you can see here, I've got it mounted to the factory GPS bar. I had to kind of tighten up this silver or metal bar because it kind of rotates a little bit, but I've tightened it. I put some Loctite on it. It seems to be doing better. And I have that mounted on, it's kind of hard to see here behind the windshield, but it's a Moto Pumps GPS mount. I think it's a 12 millimeter version for this specific bike. And then it mounts the GPS on there. What I also have that's not shown here is the Moto Pumps locking mount. I just don't have it installed yet on this bike. I have it on my BMW. Um, but this is, uh, the locking mount's a great solution. It has a little locking pin so someone can't just come up and take the GPS off. And then of course you can see the wiring goes down here and goes down. I think I have it ran back to the battery. Now, speaking of the battery, that's one more thing I always forget to mention because it's hidden under the seat here. It's a little bit dusty under here. Um, you can see I've got an anti-gravity lithium ion battery. It's the restart model. So these restart, well, there's a couple things. One is that this battery has a lot more capacity than the factory battery, which was a very small capacity. So if you have drains like a GPS or you're charging your phone or charging GoPros in my case, it has a little bit more uh, room there for extra capacity. So I like that. It's got dual terminals, so, you, so it's easy to install, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, and it's got the restart feature, which means that um, if you were to accidentally drain the battery, it automatically keeps enough power in reserve to restart the bike. And I've got this restart harness here, which allows me to connect my anti-gravity uh, jump starter to this and restart the bike without even, without even having to, because I run this out here like this, without having to even take the seat off. So really nice addition with the anti all right, well, I feel like I'm forgetting some stuff. So let me know in the comments what I'm forgetting. Um, but I guess that's it. There's not a whole ton of stuff here. And, uh, you know, as I do more of these builds, I realize that you really don't need a ton of extra stuff. So in the future, I'm trying to just say, okay, what's the minimum that I need to do to get this bike to work the way I want? Um, that tends to be the direction I'm going. So I hope this was useful. Again, if you're buying anything for your bike or riding gear, please use my affiliate links, which are in all my video descriptions, all my video comments that are pinned and on my YouTube homepage. It doesn't cost you anything and help support the channel. Uh, please support Big Rock Moto. Thank you for watching. Please ride safe and I will see you out there.